So what does spending three years of your life developing something entirely new actually look like? Well, let's rewind back to the end of 2021. The world is still a very strange place because of the pandemic, and I'm tirelessly searching to find opportunities that will take ocean thermal energy conversion forward. I stumbled across a grant on the uh, Horizon Europe website. It was about designing innovative floating substructures for ocean energy. And right then, something clicked. Up until that point, we've been facing a major question from potential customers. How would OTEC work in tropical storm zones? This had hampered previous OTEC demonstrations and was a real concern. This grant call presented the perfect opportunity to prove that we could take on that challenge. This was a stressful time. It was uh, Christmas. We were racing against the clock uh, lead up to the deadline in the new year. So we assembled a team of experts across Europe who could give us the best shot of success. It was really an uphill battle. Our previous grant application in 2020 had been rejected and a lot of work goes into these grant calls. So it had left us really disheartened. Now it was in May 2022 that my phone pinged with confirmation that we'd been successful under the Horizon Europe program, 3.5 million euros. I told everyone immediately, my team, our families, investors, it was a, a huge moment for Global OTEC, and it came right as we had just made our first hire. But as always, it's two steps forward, one step back. Reality hit. One month later, Brexit complications threatened to derail everything. Administrative hurdles on how UK companies couldn't lead projects casts uncertainty under our project. And it was a, a really, really tense time. But a few months passed and by November 2022, the largest Horizon Europe funding ever granted to OTEC technology was officially awarded to our consortium, Plotech. The project was back on track and we were ready to tackle one of the oldest challenges in OTEC history, making a floating platform resilient to severe weather. But why does this matter? Well, to answer that, we need to go back in time even further to the 1930s. This is when the first ever OTEC plant was built in Cuba by a Frenchman named George Claude. Unfortunately, it was destroyed by a tropical storm just 11 days after being installed. Since then, OTEC has seen significant advancements, but no one has ever addressed this original problem until now. So Plotech was created to advance ocean energy in regions which are vulnerable to severe weather, like the Caribbean and the South Pacific. These areas still heavily rely on fossil fuels, facing the devastating effects of climate change every year with storms becoming more frequent and more intense. Our team is made up of experts in marine renewable energy engineering, policy, environmental science, and we've spent the last two years since that kickoff meeting designing and building a cylindrical hull, a cold water intake pipe, and a proprietary connection point that we believe will drastically transform OTEC's visibility in tropical storm regions. And now we're at the end of 2024, it's all come to life. Our one to five scaled model is floating in the Atlantic Ocean, ready for its final installation at the oceanic platform of the Canary Islands in Gran Canaria, Spain. The model is engineered to withstand simulated hurricane force conditions and wave heights of up to four meters, which will be representative of much larger waves on a full scale system. For the past two years, we've worked relentlessly to make OTEC a reality in tropical regions. And while the journey isn't over yet, we're taking a moment to look back at how proud we are and how far we've come. Clean baseload energy from the ocean, 24 seven, no matter what the weather. This is our mission and this is Global OTEC.